Thank you for your interest in participating in the Strategic Environmental Research and Development Program's Aqueous Film Forming Foam, or AFFF, challenge. Please watch the full video, which describes two standardized tests and important considerations for safety, as this challenge is inherently dangerous. Find more information, submission criteria, and test guidance on www.challenge.gov. You are encouraged to pause, rewind, or replay this content to ensure familiarity with requirements and test procedures. The video will provide an overview of required test equipment, including personal protective equipment, operator techniques, and safety concerns for the blender and ramp test and the whipped cream test. This picture shows the equipment required for the blender and ramp test protocol. Details are provided in the supporting PDF. This includes the following. Safety equipment for two participants, including flame-resistant gloves, flame-resistant lab coats, and flame-resistant face shields, as well as a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. At the bottom of the picture, there is a 5 8 inch thick piece of drywall that can be used to smother the flame. The test setup includes a 16-inch cinder block, a 24 inch standard sill plate metal framing stud that's two and three eighths inch wide and a one square foot seamless stainless steel cake pan. The foam will be prepared with a 1200 milliliter blender with a straw taped to the inside to promote aeration of the foam. The foam solution measurement will be done in a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Ethanol free gasoline will be measured in a 500 milliliter measuring cup. The flame will be ignited with a simple barbecue lighter Waste material will be collected in a Department of Transportation approved fuel container. This picture shows a more detailed view of the 1200 milliliter blender. For easy aeration, a simple drinking straw can be taped to the side of the blender using a two inch wide piece of clear packing tape. The bottom of the straw should be level with the blades and the top should be positioned below the lid to provide space to introduce air to the foam. This procedure shows how to mix 150 milliliters of a 3% foam solution. Participants will wear protective gloves, safety glasses, and a lab coat for all material handling. Pour 4.5 milliliters of concentrate into the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Fill with water up to 50 milliliters, or add another 45 and a half milliliters of water, and pour into the blender. Fill another 100 milliliters of water to pour into the blender to achieve 150 milliliters of 3% foam solution. Note, some foaming will be seen in this mixture. It is not necessary to pour all of the bubbles into the blender. After mixing, note the consistency of the foam concentrate. This low viscosity, fluorine-free foam concentrate poured with ease. Other, more viscous concentrates may require longer to pour. This procedure will demonstrate foam mixing of the 3% solution. The blender has already been prepared with a standard drinking straw taped to the side with 2 inch packing tape. The straw should be placed so that air can be entrained from the top of the blender when covered and released from the bottom of the straw during blending. Using the highest setting, blend the foam mixture for 5 seconds. Note the consistency of the foam product, the stiffness, bubble size, etc. This picture shows the test setup for the blender testing. All testing requires two participants. All participants involved in the fire portion of the test shall be suited up in the following personal protective equipment, or PPE. Flame retardant lab coats, flame retardant protective face shield, and flame retardant gloves. Long pants and closed-toed shoes are also required. 
One of the test participants is responsible for setting up the video recorder, handling the fuel, and igniting the fire. They're referred to as the fire participant. The second test participant is responsible for mixing the foam solution and discharging or pouring it on the fire, referred to as the foam participant. The test setup requires a clear 10-foot radius around the pan. Note this testing was done in a certified fire laboratory with well over 10-foot ceilings. For the test itself, place the one square foot seamless stainless steel pan on an impermeable surface. Lay the cinder block down horizontally touching the pan and then stand it up on the shorter side. This will measure 16 inches from the pan to the cinder block. Place the 24 inch long steel stud track, which is notched at the bottom to hold it in place, on the pan and lean it up on the cinder block. The stainless steel pan should then be filled with one inch of water. This picture also shows the barbecue lighter, ethanol-free gasoline, and blender. The blender test procedure will start when the fire participant pours 500 milliliters of ethanol-free gasoline on the one inch of water in the pan. This should be done immediately before starting the test. The gasoline is lit with a propane torch or a barbecue lighter and the pre-burn is started. The gasoline measuring cup should be placed away from the fire. The foam participant counts out 10 seconds of pre-burn time before gently pouring the foam product down the ramp for 5 to 10 seconds. Slow pouring will reduce potential for spills and splashing. The fire participant starts the stopwatch as soon as the foam touches the fuel. Total extinguishment is determined by the fire participant. This means no flickering, flashovers, or edge effects. Note the foam consistency on the hot fuel. This could be stiff quality foam, think shaving cream, or thinner soapy foam. Note, foam should be used as quickly as possible after blending to avoid foam degradation. This picture shows the equipment required for the compressed air or whipped cream protocol. This includes the following. Safety equipment for two participants, including flame resistant gloves, flame-resistant lab coats, and flame-resistant face shields, as well as a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. At the top of the picture, there's a 5 8 inch thick piece of drywall that can be used to smother the flame. The test setup includes a one square foot seamless stainless steel cake pan. The foam will be prepared with a whipped cream dispenser, a 3 8 inch internal diameter flexible rubber tube that's four inches long, a half inch stainless steel tube that's one foot long, aluminum tape, and a burns -o -matic fan pattern propane tank tip. Compressed air is provided by eight gram stainless steel nitrous oxide chargers. Foam solution measurement will be done in a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Ethanol free gasoline will be measured in a 500 milliliter measuring cup. The gasoline will be ignited with a simple barbecue lighter and all waste material will be collected in a Department of Transportation approved fuel container. This provides a more detailed look at the whipped cream foam dispenser. This shows the nitrous oxide chargers, which are loaded into the canister to the right. On the left, the foam nozzle, which is a burns -o -matic propane tank fan tip, is connected to the one foot long stainless steel half inch tube by aluminum tape. This is connected to a flexible piece of four inch, three eighths inch internal diameter silicon tube, which is then connected to the whipped cream dispenser. All the fittings should be connected securely to avoid leaking or loss of pressure. More details can be found in the whipped cream dispenser manual. This protocol shows how to mix 500 milliliters of 3% solution. Participants will wear protective gloves, safety glasses, and a lab coat for all material handling. Pour 15 milliliters of foam concentrate in the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Fill up the cylinder to 100 milliliters total by adding another 85 milliliters of water. Pour this into the whipped cream maker. Next, measure out 100 milliliters of water in the graduated cylinder and pour it into the whipped cream maker. Repeat this three times to make a total of 500 milliliters of solution.
Participants will wear proper PPE for all testing, including flame-resistant face shields, lab coats, and gloves. The test area will be clear in a 10-foot radius. The whipped cream test procedure will start when the fire participant pours 500 milliliters of ethanol-free gasoline on the one inch of water in the stainless steel pan. This should be done immediately before starting the test. The gasoline is lit with a propane torch or a barbecue lighter and the pre-burn is started. The gasoline measuring cup should then be placed away from the fire. The foam participant counts out 10 seconds of pre-burn time before applying 4 seconds of foam from the whipped cream container. Longer application times can exhaust the foam product and cause compressed gas to blow across the flame to stoke the fire and potentially spill gasoline on the ground. The whipped cream container should be held upside down and the fan tip should be held parallel to the fuel surface for proper foam application. The fire participant starts the stopwatch as soon as the foam touches the fuel. Total extinguishment is determined by the fire participant. This means no flickering, flashovers, or edge effects. It's recommended that the foam participant mix up the whipped cream foam by shaking the container before the test. The whipped cream container should be primed so that the foam and not compressed gas are applied to the fire when sprayed. Initial testing shows that nitrous oxide produces higher quality foam than carbon dioxide charges. Note the foam consistency on top of the hot fuel. This could again be stiffer quality foam, think shaving cream, or thinner soapy foam. In the event that the foam is not able to be applied, as an example of faulty equipment or operator error, or that the foam is not effective at putting out the fire, the foam participant calls for assistance. The fire participant will calmly extinguish the fire with a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. They will pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and sweep side to side for rapid extinguishment. The gasoline fire will burn out on its own. However, it is recommended that the fire be put out immediately with the fire extinguisher. If the fire is allowed to burn out, the fire shall be monitored by the test participants until the fuel is exhausted. In the event that the fire is not extinguished, in particular for foams that are not effective, the fire can be put out by smothering it with a piece of 5 8 inch thick drywall. The fire and foam participants will remove the steel runner from the pan and place it on the ground away from any flammable materials, because it may still be hot. The participants will each hold the piece of drywall on the short edge and gently place the drywall over the steel pan to effectively smother the flame. They will apply pressure to the top of the drywall to ensure a full seal around the edges of the pan. After around three seconds, the fire should be out. The drywall can be removed for assessment. At the completion of the test and when the fire is out, let the pan rest for five minutes. The pan will be hot. While still wearing proper personal protective equipment, one participant can pick up the pan for disposal. All foam, gasoline, and water that is remaining after the test will be poured into a waste-specific Department of Transportation approved fuel container or a gas can. This will be most effectively done with a funnel in the can. Upon completion, the can should be sealed and stored in a safe place until it can be disposed. All waste should be disposed of in accordance with all local, state, and federal waste regulations. All participants will submit their test results using the submittal forms provided within the guidance document, which is available for download. Ensure all fields are entered before submitting your written entry and media files to AFFF Challenge at noblis.org. This challenge is inherently dangerous. If your team does not have the correct protective equipment, test materials, or facilities, do not proceed. Any submission that shows inadequate equipment or hazardous conditions will be disqualified. In addition, neither the Department of Defense nor Strategic Environmental Research and Development Program assume responsibility for damages or injuries that may occur when performing this challenge.